Bursts of ultrasound acoustic energy chip away at a simulated kidney stone. Researchers at the APLUW Center for Industrial and Medical Ultrasound are working to develop a safer, non-invasive way to fragment kidney stones so they may pass naturally, allowing patients to avoid painful surgery. What we were thinking was um, we would be able to perhaps break stones more effectively not using shock waves but by using ultrasound pulses. Ultrasound pulses can be generated by a much greater uh, range of technologies. It also doesn't require very, very high voltages that it does to, to produce shock waves. Burst wave lithotripsy uses relatively low peak pressure of the incident sound field. Resonances can cause stresses and fractures in the kidney stone. In much the same way, an opera singer's voice might shatter a glass. This is the burst wave lithotripsy therapy system that we're currently working with. It's a, it's a working prototype. This is the transducer. This is the uh, amplifier system that houses all the electronics to uh, both uh, determine the ultrasound parameters and produce the uh, power to drive the, the therapy transducer. Uh, the system's guided by ultrasound imaging. So we have our focal region here in the dotted red line. And you can see the stone is centered here. Uh, and we get this twinkling on it, letting us know that we're actually targeting the stone. I was originally um, an undergraduate in this lab, and I started working with Mike Bailey. And the first project that I worked on was to do experiments on how kidney stones are broken by shock waves in shockwave lithotripsy. We were looking specifically at what characteristics of the lithotripters produced uh, outputs that broke uh, kidney stones better. So the shock is not only impacting the stone, but traveling around the stone. And that really seems to be a key to producing a stone fracture. There's a tensile wave, there's a negative pressure, which can cause bubbles to grow, and we typically call that cavitation activity. Um, when the bubbles grow and collapse, they do so very forcefully. One of the things that that's good for is that, that those forceful collapses can help to break stones. Um, one of the downsides of that is that that same bubble activity can also break or injure tissue. In many ways, this is a narrow band version of shockwave lithotripsy. A shockwave, it's broadband and then it's a sharp spike of pressure. And first wave lithotripsy, we're using a, a burst which has a narrow frequency content. Rather than being a, like hitting it with a hammer, it's a series of waves with a very narrow bandwidth and that enables you to break up the stone in a way that's more um, controlled with more uniform fragments, which is clinically important. Our initial experiments just examine what are the characteristics of how the stones fracture this way compared to how they fracture in shockwave lithotripsy. And so we were looking at how quickly can we break apart the stone into small fragments, what size of fragments does it generate, um, what types of stones can we break. The other things that we're looking at are how do the sizes and shapes of the stones affect how they break. Even when you have all of that control with the parameters, the ultrasound, the water bath, there's going to be so many different types of kidney stones that we run into, both in material and size. We're just looking for both, do this, does the effectiveness of treatment vary with the diameter and the length, and also are there weird quirks in it? We want to see what kinds of variations we have, if we can maybe model it in some way so we can look at a patient's stone diameter and length and say, we can effectively break this or we can't effectively break this. So far we've found out that we can treat most stone types. We can treat some of them very, very rapidly. The softest stones crumble in a few seconds. The hardest stones generally take 10 to 20 minutes. For comparison, a shockwave lithotripter uh, treatment is about 30 minutes and can be as long as an hour. We imagine there's going to be a range of sizes of stones that we can break, but we're trying to find the limits of what indications can this be used for. Science at Work for You. This is APL, the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington in Seattle.